Thank you for joining the Florida Center for Students with Unique Abilities November webinar, Florida Post-Secondary Comprehensive Transition Programs at Florida State Colleges. Three approaches to program development and structure at Santa Fe College, Indian River State College, and Florida Keys Community College. My name is Drew Andrews. I'm the Technical Assistance Coordinator here at the Florida Center for Students with Unique Abilities. Our presenters today are Maria Partee from Indian River State College, Susan Chapone from Florida Keys Community College, and Linda Masillo from Santa Fe College. I'm the only one here. So. Hi, everyone. Someone's, someone's microphone is on other than our presenters. Um, if you could just make sure that your um, phone is, is muted. Um, Today's webinar, um, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our website tomorrow. And today's webinar may go over our typical one hour. And so for those of you who need to leave us, we understand that. But if you'd like to stay, I think we'll be under an hour and a half. But we do have lots of information today to share. And so this will be available on YouTube for you to go back and watch at any time. Handouts can be downloaded from the chat section, which can be accessed by clicking on the chat icon down um, at the bottom of the Zoom window. And so Zoom is the platform that we're using today. And if you go to the very bottom, you'll see icons that appear. One of those has a little um, speech bubble and it says chat. And if you click on that, uh, the window to the right will appear. And right there, um, the team here at FCSUA is going to post the three different PowerPoints for, um, for today in just a moment. If you are having difficulty hearing the presentation, there are phone numbers that, um, that you can call and join via phone while following the slides online. And those numbers have been posted over in the chat window. And at the end of the webinar, you will be directed to our evaluation. And if you would please complete that, so we will win the puncture. So this time, I'm going to turn it over to Maria Partee at Indian River State College. Welcome, Maria. Thank you. Let me just get my PowerPoint up. And um, can everyone see that? I hope so. Uh, yes. Good afternoon. I am Maria Partee. I am the program director for Indian River State College Project Stage. Um, Project Stage is a program where students are moving from academics to gainful employment. Um, we're located on the main campus of Indian River State College in Fort Pierce, Florida. And then um, just to kind of give you a little background, we applied for the post-secondary grant back in 2016, 2017, and was granted the award for a three-year program. We are in our first year um, of the three years uh, with our year going from January to December. We are slightly different from most colleges starting. We do not start in the fall. We start in the spring. Um, we currently have two uh, staff members, myself as the program director, and Mary Kendall, who is the program advisor. But we are in the process of looking for an adjunct professor to assist us with our students. Uh, our first class that we had what started January the 8th, 2018, and we had seven students that enrolled. Hit the right button. Um, Susan, if you'll go, I'm, I'm sorry, Maria, if you'll go up to the top and hit um, from the beginning on the panel, it'll go direct okay. where the whole screen oh, there. is. Your, okay. There you go. Now click perfect. to the next one. There. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Now, like I said, our academic year is from January to December, and our focus is on a technical career where the students are earning occupational completion points 
towards a specific certification in the area that they're interested in. Uh, our students, most of the time they're on campus from nine o'clock in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. We do follow the, um, the record or the calendar of semesters and holidays for Indian River State College because we tell the students they are the college student. Um, we do not have residential dorms. So our students actually either live in group homes or they live with their parents. So because of that, they are responsible for providing transportation. And what I will say is transportation is a big issue, uh, especially in smaller districts, smaller areas where you don't have as many bus routes. So it, for some students, it takes a while to get to college. Um, now, I wanted to kind of show you, so to let you see that Indian River State College has one of the lowest tuition and fees. Um, at this time, we have not raised our fees in over five years. So it is very economical for students to come here, but we are a, computer, a commuter campus. And if you look, you can tell that our tuition is not going to be as high as some places. So our tuition fees generally range from about $950 to $1,500 a semester. And as you can see, we have a little bit money that's left over from the student scholarships. So we're able to pay for their tuition, their fees, their books, supplies. We have an arrangement with our cafeteria where the students are able to eat daily because I didn't like what they were bringing. Some students weren't bringing anything to, much to eat for lunch. So we worked it out with the cafeteria. Students have, we've been able to purchase for them iPads plus printers. So we're, we're making use of their monies that they have to promote their college experience. Many of them do not have those um, things at home. So we have provided for them here at school. As I explained earlier, we tell the students they are first an IRSC student Second, they are a student, a project stage student. We feel that they have to have that connection with college and with their peers so that they know that they're just like everybody else. We um, make sure that they realize that they have to follow the rules just like everybody else. Uh, one of the rules here at the college is there's no cell phones used in class. So they have to follow that rule. Now these are the requirements that we go through to find our students. You know, um, first of all, they have to complete an application. With that application, we're looking at personal family information. You know, where do they live? Who do they live with? Are they a part? Do they have, have they record, are they recognized with voc rehab? Do they APD? You know, those types of things we need to know so that we can make sure that we, they are knowing what we're doing and we know what they're doing with our students. Need to have a copy of their IEP. That gives us a lot of information. Sometimes they've said something about what they're interested in. So before we meet them, at least now we've got an idea. A copy of their psychoeducational evaluation is a requirement because we need to know where, where are they on that, on that level? Where, where's their IQ? Are they meeting the guidelines of below 70? Um, also, it has to have, they have to have that documented intellectual disability, which is on that uh, psychoeducational plan. We have to have two reference letters, and those reference letters are not from family members living in the home. It needs to be from like a teacher, a counselor, things like that. Then we have, they, we need to have their college transcript. And one of the things that I look at, uh, high school transcript, I'm sorry, if they've ever gone to college before, also their college transcript. But with their high school transcript, one of the things that I look at is not only the classes that they took, 
but how many days have were they absent during the school year? Because that's going to tell me a lot as to whether or not they're going to be willing to come to college. And we keep telling them it's a privilege to come to college. It's not a right because you get to choose. Uh, students have to have received their high school diploma. They have to be over the age of 18. Now, one thing that we have not done, and that is we have not put a cap on how old the students are. We've had students that are applying that are 50 years old. We've had them, you know, apply the youngest, I believe, is 18. But um, we accept according to the guidelines. Uh, we also have an interview with the student and the parent or the guardian, caregiver. And what's good about that interview is you get a lot of information. You get to see the dynamics between the parent and the student. There's been a lot of times that we've been able to, to, to look at the parent, look at the, uh, at the student and know, hey, this is gonna be a great fit. At the same time, we've been able to ask questions such as, um, what would you like to do? Do you want to go to work and have the student tell us no? And um, kind of the interview goes downhill from there, but we're listening to what they say. Um, once that we have done the interview to help to choose our students, we also do a rubrics based on how they responded. And then we do a second rubrics to find out, pulling out the information from the IEP, from the psychological, from the interview, from the observations of watching the students to really give us more. And then a team is the group that make the decision for our students who's going to be coming into the program. This is our, oops, sorry. This is our demographics of our students. Like I said, we have seven students currently enrolled. We have three female, we have four males. And this is their demographics. You can see we have a total of four students black, one student white, and two students that are Hispanic. We have four students that are just classified as intellectual disabled, and three students that are classified as intellectual disabled with autism spectrum disorder. And you can see from when we started, the majority of our students were at the age of 22. They had just aged out of high school, but all have since had their birthdays and now we're 23. So we have the majority of our students in the range between 23 and 28, with one that's about 32. Now this is our program guide. This is our first semester and our second semester, our spring and our fall. This is what the students take. And we go by clock hours. Um, our first thing that we do when we have students coming on campus is we spend a couple of weeks teaching them where things are on campus, how to find who to go to, making sure that they're able to do that. We actually give them kind of like a little test. Um, Mary Kendall will go and be in one location, I'll be in the other. We'll send the students to her, making sure that we have visual contact so we know if they make a mistake, we know how to correct it. We want them to be able to be independent. That is the big thing here is we want independent. Then we start working on what kinds of jobs do they want? What, what things do they do? So we spend a lot of time talking about advocacy. We spend a lot of time talking about uh, self-determination. This is all in that first. And then of course they have their inclusion class, which is office of skills. We put all of them into office of skills because we feel like it's very important that they're able to manipulate computers, uh, what's online, sending emails, everything that's in today's world. And to be very honest, a lot of our students, when I go back and I'm looking at their transcripts, they've never had a computer class. In high school, 
the classes, their electives that they took were all PE. So to us, it's very important that they're in these classes. Our second semester, which is the fall semester, again, we continue with that office skill. And then we go into the, some more of the career education. You know, what's the benefits of having a job? Um, what about insurance? We, we, we go in and we're talking about all of those things and how to seek a job. Where do you go? Who do you talk to? And then we start with on-the-job training. Now, right now, we have students that are working throughout the campus. We have students that are working in the library. We have students that are working in auto mechanics. We have students that are working in um, the cafeteria with stocking and cleaning, uh, making sure things are organized. So we, we keep the students pretty busy during the day, and they're with their their. Um, peers here at the college. Now for the second year, what you're seeing here is when they're really going into their program. So we have air conditioning, automotive, office administration, nursing assistant, and child care. The set third semester is where they're actually taking a lot of the classes. What do they need to take? And then in the fourth semester, some of them continue with classes but a lot of them are then going into internships with the hope that with their internships, they're going to have jobs when they are finished. These are the occupational completion points. So with air conditioning, if the students complete the two classes, the on-the-job training and the, um, I just lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. But with all of their training, they can get an air conditioning, refrigeration, and heating helper certi certification. So they're all working towards these certifications. Now, in the first year, they get certification for completing the first two classes in office, in the office skills. So they have that that they can show their, their boss that this is what I can do with the computer. And then they'll have this other completion point saying this is what I have, I'm able to do in my area that I have chosen. Now, we also have a summer program. And with our summer program, we don't really have a class per se as the way that it's put out. What we do is we have, um, certain things that we want the, te the students to do during the, the summer. Summer session is completely optional. And again, it is the majority of the week we spend in the community doing community-based things. These are the topics that we cover. We cover wellness. We talk about personal health. We talk about how much we weigh, how tall we are. We're looking at the foods that we eat. Are we eating the right amount of foods? And then it's a requirement that we have instituted that they have to go to physical fitness. They have to do some type of a physical fitness activity at least two times a week. Now their physical fitness activity can be going to the fitness center, walking on the treadmill, um, can be going and playing basketball, shooting hoops, playing tennis, um, whatever they choose. It's their choice, but it's something that physically fitness is important and we want them to have that. Then we talk about transportation. Transportation is so important because it gives you that independence that piece that you can go where you want to without necessarily having somebody to take you. We talk about the safety. We talk about, you know, what bus route, if we're going to go from point A to point B, what bus route are we going to take? Um, and I have to tell you that in the first time that we rode the bus with the students this past summer, we messed up, we made a mistake. Um, we, something that we did not know, but our bus from the college goes to a hub. And at that hub, buses change numbers. We did not know. So we sat on our bus. 
we go all over Fort Pierce looking at each other going, um, it's going the wrong way. We're going to Walmart. We're going in the opposite direction. So finally we asked, which we should have asked first, and found out that when it went to the hub, the number on the bus route changed and we stayed on the same bus when we should have gotten off. So that taught the kids that you have to ask, is this the correct bus? Is this the bus that's gonna take me where I'm wanting to go? Bus drivers will tell us. So we learned something and the kids were able to actually move with that. They did a great job with transportation. We went different places. We took them to restaurants. We took them to uh, bowling. We took them to shopping at Walmart. We went to the Manatee Center here in Fort Pierce. We got them out into the community because we wanted them to experience riding the bus. Now we did have a test. Like everything, you have to have a test, see if they can do it. So our test for the bus for riding transportation was they had to get on the bus from the college and make it to Sable Palm, which is a change in buses. They had to go to the hub, change bus to get to Sable Palm so that we could go to the movies. And all of the students were able to do that and did it perfectly. We were very proud that they had learned that because none of them had had any experience riding the bus before. Another area that we cover in the summer is career readiness. This is where we're talking about our professionalism, our soft skills, what skills do we need? How do we talk to people? How do we dress? What about an interview? How are we doing with interviews? Because we have several students that if you ask them a question, the first thing they do is shut down, don't say anything and just kind of look at you with a smile. And we're trying to make sure that when they do go for that interview, that they are communicating because we may not be there with them. Then we talk about financial readiness. Now the financial readiness is a, such an important part because so many of our students want to be independent, to live on their own. So we're talking to them about budgeting. How do you budget? If this is how much money you have today for the month, how are you going to spend it? How much do you think it's gonna cost to have an apartment? What's the difference between an income and an expenditure? What about savings? Are you gonna save any money? So those were things that were really important that we spend all of our time talking about during the summer. We talk about it during the rest of the school year, but we really focus heavily on these four topics during the summer. And the summer is a six week period. Our classes are inclusive and specialized. Um, our specialized courses are only during the first year and it's basically teaching them about the college and then getting them into starting to think about career preparation. Um, the second year, they are probably 80, 90, 95% of the time in inclusive classes. They are not necessarily with us. <laughs> Uh, one thing that is probably different from a lot of colleges or universities, IRSC does not allow for auditing of classes. When students take a class, they're getting graded in it. And I'm going to tell you, probably with some of our students, especially the students that are coming straight out of high school, this is difficult for them. They haven't been taught how to study. A lot of times parents are, are like, well, you're in college, you're on your own, you know, you're finished, go. Sometimes they're looking at colleges. It's not really college. It's more of a babysitting, which it's not. College is college. You've got classes you have to pass. But those are some of the issues that we have that, you know, if other colleges have been able to overcome it, please tell me because we're, that's one of our biggest problems is trying to get these kids to learn how to study, how to do homework, because I don't know about anybody else, but a lot of our kids, they are coming to us and they've never had homework.
you know, whatever you did, you did it in class and that was it. So they don't know how to do homework. So that's a, a big problem. Our schedules, students have schedules that very few of them are the same. Different times they're doing different things. We have one student that you can see, she spends a lot of time, three days in the library. We have built into their schedule physical fitness. We have, you know, their office skills class, when they go to lunch, when they come back, when they're leaving. We have some students that actually take regular classes that their day is longer than others. Like um, one student, she takes painting. Um, she goes twice a week and she is in a painting class. So, um, her day on, on other days, like on Monday and maybe on Friday, she may come in a few minutes later because she does stay late during the day. So, uh, but we keep individuals, and what's nice about <laughs> schedules is we can change them as we see fit. Today, maybe there's something else happening, we can change it in just a few seconds so that they have a complete schedule. This helps the students that have autism. Uh, it keeps them organized. Um, they enjoy having their schedule. Sometimes it becomes a little bit overwhelming because it doesn't say this on the schedule. On the schedule it says I'm doing this and we have to really explain. But it's good to have schedules. Activities. We participate in most of the activities that are on campus. Um, students are, we haven't ever required them to participate, but we do ask that they participate. We have done things with welcome back to school. They participated in a job fair, in a pool party. They've participated in Constitution Day. Going and watching plays as they're getting uh, ready to to perform. We've done um, this Backtober Fair was a health fair. Um, won't talk, talk too much about that one because that one was a shock for me. Um, but like today, we actually had an activity on campus that the students, some students chose to go to. It was International Day. So the students were there, those that chose to go. These are activities that we don't make them go, they choose. We also, during the first semester, we spent a lot of time celebrating because we kept telling the students that this was something that was brand new. This was, they were the first class and we were excited that they were here. And all of our celebrations that we've done with the students have been in an inclusive setting. We did it in the office skills. And I have to tell you, the, the people that have been in the office skills have taken to the students and are their mentors. They go and they talk to them, they tell them what a good job they're doing, and they move on from there. Uh, we have celebrated the students get, receiving their scholarships, and we have uh, celebrated the end of the spring semester with giving them their certificates of what they had done for that semester. We also allow time for free time. We have students have um, an hour that they have lunch and during that time after they've eaten lunch they can do whatever. They can choose to play games um, which they are able to get from the student activities. Uh, they can play a game that's called Battling Bones. They can play Uno. They can play ping pong. They, they have a piano that people play and they enjoy going and just listening to the music that the people are playing, but it's their choice. Um, we, and what's really nice is that a lot of times other students there in the cafeteria come up to them and want to play games with them. So they're totally accepted. They're totally involved in everything that's on the campus which is great to see. Now we do have visitors that we love coming and talking to the students. We've 
We've had Paula and Kathy come to visit with the students, to meet the students. We've had, we have a youth advocate that comes over from the Tampa area, Caitlin, and she does workshops with the students. She's done things such as dating, uh, cyberbullying, um, whatever the students want her to talk about, she asks them. We've also had um, Sergeant Parti, just to let you know, yes, he is my stepson. Um, he's with the Indian River Sheriff's Office. He is, um, before he was elevated to sergeant, he actually worked with human trafficking in Indian River uh, County, as well as working with the FBI. And so I had him come and talk to the students about human trafficking and how dangerous it was to be giving out information of, of personal things on Facebook, on Snapchat, on any of that. We've also had um, a gentleman come from PNC Bank who actually was teaching them how to write checks because we all know that one day you're gonna have to write a check. So we wanted them to know how to do it correctly, but also to make them understand that just because you have a blank check does not mean that you can write it. You got to have the money behind it. And we also had Special Olympics come and talk to the students about not necessarily just going and joining to do the sports, to be, but to be a coach, that these students can become coaches. So they have other things to do besides just going and playing the sport. Volunteering. This is something that we feel strongly about because it gives us a, a sense of helping, but also it gives us as they are working, we get to see what they can do. And we're right there. It's, it's not them on the job, but it's them how they're interacting with other students, how they're interacting with other adults, how they interact with each other. We've done uh, the 2018 um, swim meet. This is a national swim meet. So we've worked with that, making sure that, you know, everybody had drinks and water and food. We've done great explorations twice. Uh, we had one in the spring and we just had one on Friday where students were helping to serve lunch and handing out bags for, this, for the high school students that came. We've assisted putting together um, folders for high schools. And let me tell you, that right there can tell you some things about students, who can do it and who can't when it comes to um, manipulating papers. We had one young man that I never thought would have been able to do it, but he was putting together brochures and he could, he could start right in the middle of collecting the brochures but every one of them, it was six brochures. He had them in perfect order every time. It didn't matter where he started. He could look at it and he knew which one was right, which one was wrong, and he could fix it without anybody having to tell him. At this time, I have finished talking about um, Indian River State College's project stage. I would like to say that if you'd like to come and visit, please give me a call. I love talking about the students. I love to show them off. I love to be able to do that. Please contact me and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. I am going to, um, at this time, I'm going to share Susan's um, their screen for project access. Susan, are you there? I am here. Can you? Um, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Please. Great. Thank you, Drew. Thank you for technical assistance. For some reason, my computer didn't want to share from here in Key West. Um, so Drew is going to be my technical assistant and share my PowerPoint with all of you. Susan, I, I'm, I'm am, having just a little bit of problem right now. Let me get that. Do you see the PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. I can see it on my screen, but. You can? Okay. Okay. I can. Let, so you can go into slide view on your screen. I can see it. Yes. Okay. Very well. Okay. 
All righty. So um, at the first screen, and, and before I even begin, I need to tell all of you that I inherited this program in just this past year. This program at Florida Keys Community College has been around for several years, and it's thanks to two people, uh, one of whom is still here at the college, Carla Malsheimer, and she's moved on to another position, and the other is Ruth Holland, who's a secondary school teacher. She teaches in a transition program here at Monroe County Schools, and students in her classroom are 18 to 22 year olds, and the idea was actually born between Ruth and Carla that wouldn't it be great if um, these students and this traditional college age experience could experience college classes. So they started with something called College Thursdays, and from that, the program has evolved into a regular college program that even includes dormitory living. So if you'll go to my slide number two, Drew, and it says that this is kind of the history. It's a developed comprehensive trans transition program. You guys all know the formal terminology of that. And we take two to three years. Uh, we look at students individually. We have lots of different certificate programs here at Florida Keys Community where they can decide on what their vocational outcome would be. We do that in cooperation with the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. So the VR counselors are on board with us and I stay in communication with them. Um, so in this particular slide, you have kind of the history of our program and I'm not gonna read because I know you're all great readers. But over in the corner is a picture of a young lady who is um, in her second year of our program and, and I, I wanna share with you her recent success She's done one full year in Project Access, which included inclusive training and programs very similar to what Maria described. How to be a good college student, how to use technology in the classroom, you know, how to use the library, how to take advantage of things on the campus. She does live in the dormitory. Her family lives in Panama City. And this year, she will be our very first student from Florida Keys Community College accepted into the Disney College program. For those of you who aren't familiar, your Disney College program been around for many years, highly competitive. What it offers is students who have at least a, a semester under their belt and they have to have a, a C grade or better can apply to the college at Disney. It's not a real college, of course, but they teach college level courses. While there, they can learn about leadership and, and structure and the history of Disney and uh, all types of, of courses related to, to good employment skills. And they get a job at Walt Disney World and they live in the dormitory. And out of 27,000 applicants, Jalissa, whose picture you see over there, was accepted of one of 600 who will be attending. So we're very proud of that accomplishment. And um, it's through Project Access that we watched her grow in all types of confidences. She went through interview skills training to learn how to interview, and she was interviewed for the Disney College. She had to take online tests in order to pass. There were about five different levels. And that's the type of thing that we want to hope that we're preparing our students for. If you would move to the next slide, please, Drew. Next slide. Can you, can you give me slide number three? So as students get started in our program, obviously our history goes all the way back to 2010. We worked with volunteers in 2011. We started offering some leisure classes like ceramics and things in 12. And then our first credit course started in the fall of 2013. Our first graduate here was in 2014. And we developed a workforce readiness co uh, course in the fall of 15. So that's kind of been the progress through. The first dormitory resident was in 16. If you'll move on to the next slide, please, Ruth. So initially, students, there wasn't any funding, of course, because there wasn't. It was a start. It was a, a wonderful concept of ideas. And their initial student changed major three times. Oh, I want to be this. I want to be that. And there were no mentors or instructors. They were put in courses with other students. Now we have an adjunct a faculty member who teaches four of the project access classes in the first semester that are exclusive to them. And then second semester, she teaches the last and final phase of project access. And she's a reg regular adjunct professor here. So she teaches other things as well. So through that, they kind of get to learn and participate. And like Maria pointed out, they get homework. And for many of them, that was a first time thing. 
So now they have to understand that the homework is a requirement of the instructor grades the homework, just as the instructor also grades attendance, because we all know that attendance at jobs is just as important as, as you know, your skills. You have to be there in order to get that paycheck. So that was how we got started. Um, and now we also follow um, the STAR plan. So everybody's familiar with STAR plan. You can get a copy of it on the Project 10 website. There's great information about it. And we follow that plan to make sure that our students are on a vocational track and that we're giving them the right courses. If you'll go to the next slide, please, Drew. So we say it only takes one. It takes one student to get this idea that they want to get it done. They do need support from home, even if they are living in our dormitory. Our parents have to stay really involved, and they also get the support of staff. Now here, obviously, we've been doing this for a few years, even though this is our first year with 10 living in our dormitory. We have a dormitory of 100. 10 of them are all Project Access students. They have to be accepting. So the staff and the faculty have to be very accepting of all this, and they are. They're very welcoming, and they know our students. In fact, secretly, one of the faculty said, I love having them in the classroom. Why? Because they want to be here. They want to participate. I had a faculty member tell me that when she asks questions, she can count on that a Project Access student will raise their hand and at least try the answer. So it only takes that one student to pave the way for more, and that's what happened here. Next slide, please. So here's some lessons that we've learned since we're a, a little more um, going, gone through our initial growing pains, although we go through growing pains every day. We have learned where to reach out for financial support, and as you know, we do get financial support through the Unique Abilities Program. Um, we also know that there are other courses that are better for students, and um, so these supportive courses, one of the things that we mandate that everyone takes is our Intro to Computer Applications course. We know, like Maria told you about the office skills, our Intro to Computers does all of the Microsoft things, Word and Excel and Access and PowerPoint, and we know how vital that is to jobs and to being a good college student. Along the way, we've learned those things as well. And we've also learned to rely on local resources, that where we can, where they can get, um, you know, we learn to rely on the city bus to help us to get people to learn the routes so that those people that don't live here on campus can take the bus back and forth. We've learned that they can learn to take the bus to outside things and enjoy things in the community. So you, you learn to, to ask for, re, for help, and we've discovered that people enjoy helping. Next slide. And here's just an overview that you can all look at later that talks about how all the courses got started. Um, obviously, we hope that there will be a student eventually who wants to take that certificate, which is in the purple area, and actually get a degree. And, and we think that, that there's the potential for that in a couple of students who are now completing their second year in the program or and even in our first year program. But initially they, they choose one of the certificate areas. We have 16 of them here on campus now and um, we're hoping that they can then apply those credits and actually go for the associate's degree or maybe even the bachelor's which is something we've just started offering here. Next slide. So our students are also required to take the workforce courses. They're required to take college preparatory courses. They're required for computer applications. They do earn the right just at graduating from Project Access to walk in college commencement, which is so very important to them. And then all of our courses here are for credit and they are graded. So even the courses that are ex exclusive to them, those are worth two college credits and they get a grade on them. Um, students are assigned an academic mentor, or if they live here, they get a residential mentor. They pay the same tuition that everybody else pays. If there's lab fees involved in the course, they pay those. Um, obviously, VR is a great help for all of those things. Next slide. So 
so social experiences. We all know that when you get involved, you become a better student. So we require that they join at least one club. Most of them are members of the Special Olympic Service Club that's on the campus. Doesn't necessarily mean that they participate in a sport, but they can cheer the sport on or participate in fundraisers. But students are, we have a student in the dive club right now. We have students who Jalissa, who you met earlier via photo, uh, started a club called Disney Club for other people who are in love with all things Disney. And she got all the requirements for a com college club and got it chartered on our ca campus. So there are other things that they can do. Um, and like I said, they're assigned a residential mentor. We give that mentor a scholarship for participating. We also make the mentor go through lots of training and the mentors meet with me on a regular basis and the student that they're mentoring, the mentee, has to sign off that they have indeed spent that time and hours with them. So we have both joint meetings with mentors and mentees and just mentor meetings by themselves. And next slide, please. So they also have to complete internships, both on-campus and off-campus internships are required. On-campus, some of the same things like Maria mentioned, might be the library, might be the bookstore, might be the campus cafe. Um, they're also required to meet with a career counselor and we require that they have resumes by the end of their second semester. We also use field trips. We've already been on several. We've been to the animal farm that the Sheriff's Department runs down the street. We've had outdoor speakers. Um, students volunteer also in the community. One of our students volunteers uh, just re recently at the Tropical Gardens where they had a children's program. So lots of both community experiences and uh, on-campus experiences. Next slide. So like I said, we're still learning. Big number in the dormitory this year, honestly, very, very few problems, and certainly no problems that would be unique to our population, which is the same type of population that Maria is talking about. We're discovering that, you know, they blend in and other students are very accepting. Um, the, I think the problem for us is that people are still tentative and they're cautious about wanting to let their child live in a dormitory because let's face it folks, dormitories don't always have the best reputation. <laughs> but I think what they're discovering is students are learning a lot about themselves and what they can do and we're seeing far more success than we are problems. Um, we're also, so I guess our biggest problem is reaching out. We want to reach out more, more beyond Monroe County. We are seeing some interest even from other states and we hope that that continues because we um, believe that the program is enriched as we get people from other areas that are able to bring other cultures and other ideas into our system. So uh, next slide, please. And there's just a list again of all the resources that we use. I'm sure many of you know all of these resources. And like I said, we wouldn't be here at the stage we are now if it weren't for Ruth and Carla who had the vision to start this program. And I think that their vision has already proven to be a success because we have had people graduate with certificates and we have people who are already employed longer than a year at careers in the community. So. Um, it's a little bit about our program. I invite any of you to contact me and um, feel free to take a look at any of those resources. I'm sure Drew can make sure that you get all of our email and phone information. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thanks so much. And um, I have a quite well, we're going to do questions at the end. Um, so we'll move on to Linda um, Masolo, who is with Santa Fe College. And Linda, if you want to share your screen and begin. Okay, I'm trying to do that now. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay. Okay, can you see that? It's saying that you're sharing. And yes, now if you'll just click on slideshow, you'll be ready to go. Okay, let's see here. From the beginning. There we are. Okay. There you go. All right. So, again, I'm Linda Musillo. I am here to tell you about Project Saint, uh, which is the name of our team. We have a lovely Saint Bernard, who you will see in a minute in a picture coming up. Uh, but it also stands for this acronym Student Access and Inclusion Together. 
And there's are some of our lovely uh, students and mentors together, actually all graduates at this point. Uh, we are a one to two year program, but most of the students do participate for two years. So you all know this, what a, what a CTP is. Um, where do we fit in here? Let's see. Um, we do provide certificates, and I'll say more about that. Uh, we are a college now, Santa Fe College. You may think that we are a community college, but we are newly, a couple of years ago, a college because a few bachelor's uh, degree programs have been added. Uh, all of our students do have intellectual disabilities uh, and we get documentation along those lines. Uh, we offer advising, yes, we offer a structured curriculum and definitely for at least half of the program, the students are in, in our case, not receiving credit, but either auditing or participating inclusively with students who do not have disabilities. Internships are very much required and a big part of what our students do. I don't think I need to go over this with all of you. Um, I'll go on. So we have a long and deep history with students who have intellectual disabilities. Actually, Project Saint is housed in our adult education area. So that, that it, I think is unique uh, amongst the people talking today uh, that we have an adult education model. I always like to say that our students in Project Saint have one foot in adult education where all of the classes are also inclusive, but they have the other foot in general education, doing lots of other things on campus with other students. Uh, so you can see, you know, just a little bit of our history that we uh, had an adults with disabilities program going way back uh, for these years, for many years. And that was a, a, a state funded uh, program that was ultimately defunded, at, le at least for us and for many other programs like us. But we continue to work with students who have intellectual disabilities, both in and outside of Project Saints. So we currently have about 40 students who have intellectual disabilities in our adult education area. But amongst those students, right now 11, and our goal is to get up to 15 students are in Project Saint. So, so we really have a broad spectrum of individuals here who have intellectual disabilities, all ages, all needs. Um, some of them are very appropriate and identified for Project Saint. Some of them do very well in adult education uh, without being in Project Saint. Uh, we are an approved Florida CTP. Uh, that was as of 2017. So our students who are in Saint do receive the scholarships through the Center for Students with Unique Abilities. We had a short tenure where we had a, a fee for service as well, but the scholarships uh, do cover our entire fee. And then some, they get to pocket some of the money to use for other things for their, their education. So we too have a, a pretty low fee structure. Um, that's in part because our adult education piece is fully grant funded and, and, uh, and very low cost. So the students do not have to pay for any of those courses. And so we started uh, with Project Same back in 2013, very small, and, uh, and expanded since then significantly. And here's our staff. So there's myself. I'm the program administrator. Uh, we also have a mentor coordinator who is our scheduling guru. We, we put out schedules every week for the students. Uh, she also supervises the student mentors. Mentorship is a big, big part of what we do with our SAIN students, and I'll say more about that. Uh, we use the enhancement grant that was offered through the Center for Unique Abilities in order to develop a horticulture agriculture partnership with a nonprofit called Grow Hub, 75 acre farm where the students go out and learn horticulture and agriculture skills. And there's lots of opportunities in this area for them to use those skills. So of course our ultimate goal for all of our students is employment. And, and that's, that's one area that's very accessible to many of our students and just a, a lovely fulfilling thing for them to do. Um, they in fact, also sell the things that they grow all during the year if they're in that pathway. And uh, then we profit share. So they're making money all along the way as they uh, learn the skills. 
We also, with the enhancement grant, hired a job developer part-time who works individually with all of the St. students, as well as with every student in adult education who has an intellectual disability who is looking for a job. Uh, so our job developer meets with the St. students every other week. And one of the things that I love that she's doing is she's helping them to develop a virtual portfolio. So they have uh, online, they've got videos of them on their internships uh, of themselves and photographs and their resume and any awards they get and any certificates they get. It's all uh, online in a, in a, uh, a Wix page, a, a web page that she's developing with all of them. And that's going to be a big takeaway for, for them. Um, our mentors uh, are, are a, a big part of our, our staffing. Those are Santa Fe students who are paid to um, be buddies, essentially, to, to our students in a variety of capacities, both uh, social and academic. Um, and, and then, of course, it takes a village at Santa Fe, and we've got lots and lots of other people who support us, uh, whether it's, you know, the manager at Domino's who takes on a, a, an intern, uh, whether it's the, uh, the, the, the basketball, uh, the fitness, you know, staff who, who uh, support our students as they come in and use the facilities, et cetera, and so on. Uh, so again, we're a, a two-year program by and large for our students. The target group is under age 25, but again, like some of you said, we, we do uh, on a case-by-case -case basis evaluate the, uh, the incoming applicants, and we will go over that if we think that the candidate uh, is, is, is really a good fit for the program. Uh, we are accepting individuals who, who definitely want an intensive, inclusive college experience and who want to live and work independently on their own um, and, and for whom they'll benefit from this complete wraparound program where uh, not only are there job goals, but independent living goals, community engagement, self-determination, and academics. These are some of our basic entrance criteria. They sound very similar to the entrance criteria I heard from uh, you all already. You know, students who do have an intellectual disability, we're looking for that below 70 IQ. Um, in some cases, we're not getting an ESE diploma anymore for the students incoming because of the changes in the state uh, due to that. But we are still looking for the diagnosis. Um, ability to commit to 20 hours per week, at least, in SAINT activities. Um, supportive family, able to get here. We don't have housing. It's not a residential college. We do have a trial period in adult education for any students who want to apply to Project Saint, and that allows us to see whether it would be a good fit for them to be part of the more intensive uh, Project Saint. Um, there's a, a very voluminous application. They have to write an essay themselves. Uh, two letters of reference. I heard that before. We do interview the students and parents, but we interview them separately um, because we want to get a, you know, a, a pure take uh, on those answers without anyone influencing each other. And that can be a very interesting contrast when you compare the, the two interviews. And then we have a committee decide on the acceptance of the students. We also use the STAR plan with our students as well. We found that to be a really excellent tool. And, and then we're looking at all of these areas in the STAR plan, right? So we're hitting on everything you all were saying already, uh, including tech skills, bus riding, all of the above, involvement in clubs, everyone in an internship every semester. So these are some of our curricular requirements. Again, in terms of hours, um, we do require that you're enrolled in at least two academic classes each semester, and these can be a combination of adult ed and general ed, vocational skills classes, or certificate bearing classes, and I'll, I'll say more about our options soon. Um, every student in an internship every term, working on independent living skills, and I have them log this, uh, what they're doing at home, whether the goal is is cooking or learning some chore at home, doing the laundry, mowing the lawn, you know, whatever it is for each individual. Obviously, everyone's plan is different. Uh, everyone required to be in a club. I heard someone else say that too. Uh, 
workshop is something that is uh, a big part of our program and, you, and maybe unique to our program. Uh, even though the students all during the week have very individualized programs, this is a coming together. Everyone attends the workshop that will be with several mentors. I provide the topics for the workshop. Sometimes it's a guest speaker, sometimes it's an outing, uh, sometimes it's a party, uh, but everyone is part of the workshop together every week. Um, it's, it's the only class really that isn't, you know, purely in inclusive in the sense that it's just the same students and the mentors. It's not other college students, um, but it's an essential. It, it really is a bonding experience for them. Um, they need to attend review meetings. That's a requirement. Um, every week they're required to, and this is something new we're doing, they're required to complete weekly online checklists. Um, this really helps them with their tech skills as well, where they're self-monitoring and they're documenting what they did that week. Um, it's a very simple checkoff form that they need to do this weekly for us and, and show us that they're aware of what their goals are and that they're keeping track of their goals. And they do meet bi-weekly with our job developer to review their goals and to work on that virtual portfolio. Okay, so my favorite part of this presentation is the pictures and there's gonna be a lot, a lot more of those coming up. I apologize for the blur. I think a lot of these are cell phone photos that could have been better, but uh, here we are with some of our star plans and the students do take those home with them. And here's some examples of goals in each domain. Um, so auditing classes related to interests. Uh, this was a student who was a fine arts event usher and assisting with the setup and breakdown of events. We have internships that are both on and off campus in the community, depending on what the student's interest is and what we have available. Uh, this student was participating in the Christian Club, this student cooking an entree weekly, and this student participating in RAD training, which is a self-defense training that's offered by our Santa Fe police on campus. Rape, aggression, defense. It is for women only, and it's something we recommend to every female participant in our program. I ask my students to send me pictures of the things they cook, which I enjoy getting. So mentorship is very, very key to our program. Uh, we currently have as many mentors as we have students, but it's not a one-on-one -on -one paired off relationship. As a mentor, you, you, you potentially work with all of the saints and the saints work with all of the mentors. It really depends on schedules and interests and so forth. The saint students do receive between seven and 10 hours of mentorship weekly. So about half the time they're fully on their own and about half the time they're with the mentors. And some pictures of students with mentors. This is at our horticulture program. In the gym. This was actually an internship. She was a scorekeeper and an assistant manager to the basketball team. And so she was keeping score here during their practices. This is in one of our computer classes. All right, so what is inclusion? I think we all know what inclusion is. Basically everything the same students do is inclusive of other uh, non-disabled students, college students, um, with the exception of, as I said, the St. Workshop, but even there, they're with the mentors. Um, so they're taking adult ed classes, they're taking general education classes, they're in clubs, everything they do inclusive. Lots of tech supports that we have in our adult education lab. We work closely with our Disabilities Resource Center. So anything that we really need for our students, we get loaded into our computer uh, in the lab. These are examples of some of the things we do. Um, so you know, writing programs, spelling programs, screen readers, uh, books on tape, et cetera. As these are some of the adult education offerings that our students can partake in. So you can see here that we do have quite a few certificate yielding classes, like the child care certification, the safe food handling. These are some of the general education kinds of classes that students have audited. We, we do um, promote the idea that they can either partially or fully audit the classes. We get permission from the professors for them to sit in for part of the term without having to pay for the full audit. Um, if they decide based on that partial audit that they wanna use their Saint scholarship to pay for a full audit, they can do so. And these are some of the classes that students have taken in the uh, general education areas. And 
really the world is their oyster as far as the kinds of things that they can take. Really, anything that they're interested in, we will uh, try to make happen for them. So these are some of our students in some of the inclusive classes. This is actually the adult education lab. Uh, Ella was taking a criminology class and uh, uh, she also took some American history classes and did very well. She asked the professor whether she could write the papers uh, and take the tests and she did so. She kept up with the assignments to the best of her ability and really forged a, a very good relationship with that professor. I love this picture of Vincent in the modern dance classes. He took several rounds of modern dance classes and honestly he was, he was a star and beloved by the professor and by the other students in the class and, and it was as good for, for them as it was for him. Uh, and this is not a mentor with him. This is another student in the class who, who bonded with him and uh, he had a great time. Our students are, are very engaged in uh, campus activities. We put them on their calendars every week. Some of them are choices. Some of them are things that we ask them to do. Um, and we do require them to be in at least one club. We have a zoo, which is a pretty special thing. So here are some of the inclusive campus activities. This was the, uh, uh, the yearly Valentine Day dance that our students went to and got all gussied up for. And what was nice about that is they brought in some professional dancers to teach them how to do swing dance. So they had a really good time flirting with the ladies during that event. Uh, we do something called buddy lunch. So we do put on the calendar that the Saints will go to the uh, food court together and hang out together. And, uh, and that's another great bonding experience for them. And sometimes the mentors go with them as well. In the gym, in the game room. This is our organic gardeners club. So one of our primary goals, uh, like the rest of you, is that our students will get jobs and prepare for jobs. So we have hard, uh, hard and soft skill classes that they participate in, credential bearing classes counseling and workshop sessions. We have a career placement office on campus and we work closely with Voc Rehab. They get invited to all of our SAINT meetings. These are some of the courses that we offer in adult education. So we do have keyboarding and computer. Uh, these are courses we've offered in the past, warehouse training, cashiering, retail, entrepreneurship, and lots of soft skills workshops. Often those are offered as part of that weekly SAINT uh, workshop that we do. These are some of our certificate yielding programs that we have. Uh, this is a, a series of uh, workshops on customer service essentials. We do have the child care certification for early childhood, first aid and CPR. We've got introduction to construction skills. We do have CNA, and then we've got that horticulture pathway and an artist entrepreneur pathway. Uh, that's something else that we did with the enhancement grant is uh, we devoted it to uh, developing this pathway for talented artists who want to market their art in the community. And, and Gainesville has a very vibrant art community that they can become part of. Uh, Santa Fe College also has all of the above uh, and some of our students have accessed these courses as well. Every student participates in an internship. So these are just some examples of, of internships that they've participated in uh, on campus, um, helping, helping grounds, uh, helping in offices, helping the police uh, give tickets to people, um, uh, being ushers in the fine arts hall. We have a thrift st store on campus, so that's a wonderful opportunity for students who are interested in, in retail, uh, working in the gym, helping the teams. Uh, we've got a food pantry on campus, so really there are so many opportunities on campus. And, and what I have to say uh, again is, you know, when I said it takes a village, that, that by and large, everyone on campus has really embraced our students and been so, so open to uh, providing these opportunities to them. And we have had plenty of students who have had uh, internships off campus as well. Uh, we had one student who was a rabid soccer fan and Becky Burley, who's the UF soccer coach, uh, took her on as an assistant and she had a, a great time helping the team in a variety of ways. Um, we had a student, and I have a picture of her coming up, uh, working at Signature Healthcare, um, uh, a, a nursing home, uh, where, and she later got a job in that area. 
Uh, we have a, a student who worked at Domino's and got hired by Domino's. So we've had a really good success with students getting hired after the uh, internship experiences. So here's a, some of our students on their internships. I told you I, lo I love the pictures the best. Um, this was obviously a gardening internship. This is one of our students who uh, not only got her childcare certification, but got a job at O2B Kids afterwards. Here's our assistant manager uh, to the ladies basketball team right here in the middle. And you wouldn't think it, but she uh, can hold her own with all of these players. She could hit three pointers just like the rest of them. This was our young man who got hired by Domino's. There's our, our young lady who worked with the soccer team. And over here in the corner uh, is the young woman who worked in the, uh, the uh, healthcare setting of the nursing home and got hired as a recreation aide. Again, uh, at, at a nursery school in the community. Here are some of our students at the uh, horticulture site called Grow Hub. And, and also learning to be a beekeeper. That's also at Grow Hub. This young man has decided he's going to use his scholarship to take some additional courses in beekeeping and start his own beekeeping business. Here's some of our artist entrepreneurs at a local sale. Okay, so St. Workshop, again, this is one of the things we require of the students. It's an hour and a half every week. Um, and these are some of the kinds of topics, but it changes every, every week. Um, at least once a month, they have an outing. Uh, once a month, they have a guest speaker. Once a month, they have a game day where they're playing games together. But we've done all kinds of fun things with them, including this. This was one of the workshop sessions where they learned to do Snapchat together and went all around campus doing it with the mentors. Here's a sample saint schedule. Um, again, they're all very different. Uh, this particular person was going for the child care certification, uh, but she was also helping out the women's softball team on the side because she was really into softball as well. And you can see that we have all kinds of things going on here for her. And there's her, her uh, internship at the preschool. So these are some of our outcomes uh, that I, I, I love to tell people about, how many people have participated and graduated, how many are employed or have job offers. Um, some of our students do continue on in adult education post Saint. Um, lots of internships participated in, many professional credentials and many audits of classes. And then in addition to, to those outcomes, uh, we had some very special and significant outcomes that I, I detailed here uh, that don't fit you know, neatly into to countable outcomes, but learning to ride a bus, uh, performing with the jazz ensemble, that was a class that the student audited, um, doing one's own laundry because mom used to always do it, that was a great outcome for that student, going up on their tests in adult education, uh, improving their typing speed, first boyfriend, first kiss, et cetera, and so on. Uh, so, I mean, just as a little background in terms of how we, we got started uh, with this here on campus, we put together a PowerPoint, we talked to all the powers that be, and, uh, and, and really people were very, very supportive from the get-go. And we do continue to develop partnerships in the community as well as uh, on campus. These are some of our community partners. We've had speakers from CAR, the Center for Autism and Related Disabilities. Many of our students are involved with the Best Buddies group at UF because we don't have a Best Buddies group here on campus. These are some of the places where we've placed internships. And I always find that once we've had a student uh, uh, at an internship, then that particular uh, facility or entity is much more willing to take on somebody else in the future because they have such a good experience with the person who we send. So some of our challenges have, have, have been continuing to grow that community buy-in, finding people jobs, which is sometimes a, a challenge, and sometimes people's expectations are too high, and sometimes they're too low. Um, because we're a community college, uh, I mean, again, really a college, but because a lot of the students leave in a couple of years, uh, we lose the mentors pretty quickly, and so we're constantly having to rehire and train mentors. Things here sometimes take a long time. Uh, it's a college, so I know you're all familiar with that. Scheduling can be a challenge, and boy, it's a lot of work, which is why we keep the program as small as we do. Our cap is 
15. Our future, we think, is bright. Here's some of our students at the Hartwick Conference. Uh, for some of them, it was their, their uh, first time on their own in a hotel without mom and dad, uh, first time tying a tie around their neck themselves, a lot of firsts for them. And now I'm up to questions if anybody has any. Okay, thank you so much, Linda. Sure. Well, folks, as you can see, we have heard from three amazing um, programs today. So I'm going to try to look at the chat box here and, um, and see what questions. Um... I'm stopping my share. Okay. Okay, yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so as I look at the chat box, I'm trying to see, um, I did lose internet connection for a few minutes there at about 3.30. So there may have been some questions before that. If there were, please retype them. Um, Maria, do you use mentors? And you're muted, so let me unmute there, you. I am muted. Um, at this moment, we don't, I'm in the process of developing the plan writing the manual, getting the, the uh, everything so that we can actually start in the, in the uh, spring. Okay, and then someone asked about the PowerPoint presentations and they were all put right in the chat box. And if you joined us late, if you go to the bottom of the, win the Zoom window, a group of icons will light up across the bottom of your screen and one of those says chat. And if you click on that, the chat window over to the right, will open and again all of this has been recorded today and will be posted on the website along with the PowerPoint presentations those will be um, posted also along with so the YouTube that you can go to to find out more um, let's see if there's any other questions I'm scrolling through here Um, someone says they like, they're interested in the way that Santa Fe used adult education, and that's why we had three very different college programs, one with adult education, um, another with, um, that use, uses primarily CTE, and then Florida Keys Community College, and Susan shared, um, you know, on, on that. Um, let's see if I have any other questions here. Um, uh, you can unmute yourself in the top right there if anyone has any questions and we're going to stay online for just a minute and allow people to ask any questions that you may have. Yes, someone is asking if the website has information about our grant cycle. And I was going to tell folks, um, visit our website. We have an amazing web designer and she's doing an amazing job. And you can go to the, um, under post-secondary programs and then under grants and the grant cycle is listed um, right there. Let me see if I can, um, um, get to our website real quick and I'll show you right where that is. Um, um, open new window. Um, okay, let me hit share screen. Share. Okay, if I go here, Are you seeing the website now um, under grant opportunities, under post-secondary institutions? And then if you go to grant opportunities, and you see right here is the FPCTP grant funding cycle. And if you click right here, it will download to your, um, download to your computer. 
okay? Um, okay, so they found it, okay? Any other questions that anyone might have? I really do want to take um, a minute and thank all of our presenters today um, for having such great presentations prepared for us, sharing so much about your programs. Um, I know that I, I really enjoyed this because it really, um, and I learned a couple of things about programs um, from each one of you. And so I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Linda. And thanks to all of you for taking the time to join us today and um, to find out more about Florida Post-Secondary Comprehensive Transition Programs. Um, again, at any time, we're happy to um, schedule a Zoom with anyone to talk about Florida Post-Secondary Comprehensive Transition Programs, and that might be at a state college, it might be at a career technical center, or a career technical college, or a university, or a, a private, not for profit, um, college in the state of Florida. Again, this has all been recorded today and it will be posted to our website probably by in the morning. And so if you just visit our website and um, under, um, oh goodness, now, um, let's see, uh, the webinars will be listed Claudia, can you share that in the chat box with me where the webinars? Where yeah, the I just I just did it. It's, uh, the webinar is going to be posted. The materials are related to the webinar will be on our events uh, section. Uh, the link is already on the chat, so you, everybody can access there. The slides are already there, and I think that tomorrow morning we, we will uh, have the recording uh, from YouTube. Great. Thank you, Claudia. And when you go to that event, you'll be able to also see some of the other webinars that we've had. We're um, archiving those so that you have that information. Well, if there are no other questions at this time, we're going to end the webinar and we are about 20 minutes over our time. And thanks to all of you for staying, staying with us. And um, please be sure when you receive the evaluation, um, oh, I need to, we need to post the evaluation. If someone would post the evaluation. Yeah, I just I just shared a link for the evaluation. Okay. So right there at the very bottom of the chat box, and I'm going to also send you this by email in the morning. Um, but if you want to go ahead and complete an evaluation now, but I'll be sending out a follow-up email. And um, as you see, the HTTP and then the BIT dot ly fcsua webinar eval 11618 that's the evaluation for the webinar and we would appreciate you completing that so that we have your input as we schedule and um, plan new webinars thanks everybody and i hope you have a great afternoon you too thank you thanks. thank you thanks <laughs>